Welcome to Wagered on Tilt. I am T, and today we are going to be talking about the Monte Carlo method. Now, there are multiple ways to run a Monte Carlo method. Um, it's used a lot in science, physics, chemistry, and what it does is it takes many, many events to try and reduce everything down to averages. So by inserting a random event um, over thousands and thousands of trials, you'll come to an average, right? So that works great for sports because everything regresses back to the mean. So today we're going to be going through Monte Carlo method number one, um, and then I'll do another video on Monte Carlo method number two. Um, and then from there, you can start really evaluating your games. So again, the Monte Carlo method is a simulation event where you take randomness, averages, and then see over thousands of times what is the overall outcome going to probably be. And then we'll get those percentages and know how to place our bets. So let's go ahead and dive on into the sheets. To quickly summarize what we're doing and what we're going to be talking about today is that we're trying to take information and we're going to try and find the average results that could happen in a large data set. So typically you wanna deal with around 10,000 to 100,000. Um, one thing to remember is that everything always regresses back to the mean, which means that even though a team might be doing excellent one season, the very next season they might come back to a more average number of baskets, goals, hoops, wins. Uh, the Monte Carlo method is where we're gonna be taking teams averages and their standard deviation and a random event variable where we're gonna say, this thing just randomly occurs and it's a value uh, to try and simulate game to game to game to game occurrences because again things can happen in between those games the trick to however running this scenario is not just once uh, we need to run it lots and lots of times as i said ten thousand a hundred thousand times if you want so i've gone ahead and set up a way that we can do this in a google sheet the reason that we're going to do it in google sheets today rather than excel is that uh, Google Sheets you can run from a mobile device. So if you're at a sports book or you're on the road and you want to check some numbers real quick before you submit a bet through your mobile device, um, you can do so in the Google Sheet. So the first thing up um, is that when you come into doing a Monte Carlo, you need two to three years worth of data. Um, that data is easy to find sometimes, sometimes it's harder. Uh, I go ahead and use uh, basketball reference for basketball stats, uh, hockey reference for uh, hockey stats, uh, football reference for football stats and things like that. Soccer, I don't do too much of, um, though Monte Carlos work really well for soccer as well. In this scenario, we're going to be working with basketball today. So um, I'm going to collect two to three years worth of game information. What I need from game information is going to be the date of the game, who was home, how many points did the home team score, who was away, how many points did the, home, uh, the away team score, um, so in here in basketball reference, you can come up in here and just choose your schedule and results for the past several years. And in order to get this information out, you can get it through either a VBA macro, you can get it through an API call, you can get it through a lot of different ways or just do copy and paste. Uh, copy and paste is usually the most easy and common way to do that. Um, if you do the copy and paste and just dump the information into a spreadsheet, please be aware that it may not be formatted as you saw it on the site. So you're gonna to wanna to scrub and clean that data to make it useful and actually look clean. Um, that is gonna be really critical for you to be able to do these things properly. Um, when you do that uh, and you have the information put into your sheet, right? So let's say I went ahead and copied all these months for several years worth of information. I'm gonna have it into a spreadsheet that will look somewhat like this. So this is my history sheet. And in the history sheet, it's just that. It's the full history of all teams and their information. Um, and I've already gone ahead and scrubbed the data because again, it does not come in the correct format, but I went ahead and did that for everybody in this uh, situation. Um, so there are a few different ways to set up a Monte Carlo method. We are gonna be doing our first version here actually like to create a few additional data sheets as well so that that way I can quickly slice and dice the information. Um, I go ahead and create an away history, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's sorted by the away team and their results. Uh, I then go ahead and create a home history, which same thing. It is the home team then sorted by the home team and their results. And then I create a team data sheet which is now going to be using um, some relatively complicated formulas in Google Sheets to pull out the information it needs. So what we have here at the top of team data is we have the team name, 
P-A-E, points away earned. P-A-A, points away allowed. P-H-E, which is points home earned. And P-H-A, points home allowed. So what this is doing is saying the Atlanta Hawks, on average, from the data that we collected, earn 110.32 points per game when they're away, but they allow 117 when they're away. Same thing when they're home, they get about 114.6, but they also allow about 114.34 when they're home. So this is a useful tool because then you can store all the information into this one sheet and reference this sheet consistently without having to copy and paste the formula over and over and over and over for trying to figure out what are these averages. So I like to store it in one table. And if you at any point choose to add history to a table to the away and the home, this table then just automatically is updating because it's looking at the entire table. So it's nice for a longer term use. Um, so once we've got all this information in there, um, right, we have our averages now, and I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to put the information for these formulas into the description. So if you want to copy the spreadsheets exactly as I have them here, you'll be able to use the formulas that I'm going to put into the description of the video, and you can just copy and paste that in. Um, you will need to collect and harvest your own data and be sure though that it is set up in the same exact layout that I have. If you need to, go ahead and pause the video and you can take a look at how some of the data points are set. So what it's doing is it's running and calculating, okay, in this game, here's what the away scored, here's what the home scored, here's what the away scored, here's what the home scored. And then it's just tallying up for us who won that game and what the ultimate outcome was. So now that we have this information, the thing that we need to do is find out what are the probabilities of these teams winning or losing based upon the Monte Carlo simulations. So here um, I am using again another formula uh, to find out how many times did the away team win. So when you're trying to find the percentages for the away team or the home team, all you really need to do is take how many times did the away team win against the total amount of scenarios. Um, so you just take your away percentage away from one to get your home percentage. So in this scenario, this is saying a 39% chance, well, 39.74% chance that the away team will win and a 60.26% chance that the home team will win. Again, just because the Dallas Mavericks have a 60% chance in the Monte Carlo simulations to win, it does not mean they're gonna win. It does not mean that that's the team you bet on. This is just guidance information. You never wanna take a sports betting model at face value. You want to build multiple models, listen to the news, read stories, understand what's going on with the teams, and then make sure that all of your values are pointing in the same direction. If all your values are pointing in the same direction, then you know that you've got something going on that's accurate because all indicators are saying that direction. The second part of that is even if all of my betting models say that the Dallas Mavericks have a 60% chance of winning, which is really good, I don't necessarily want to make the bet. The bet might have too much juice on it. So if I'm laying minus 600, I'm not going to risk $600 to pick up 100 on a team that only has a 60% chance of winning. There's no value in it. So again, sports betting isn't just finding the team that has the highest chance of winning that's useful, but it's also about finding that value in the bet. Um, if a team has a 49% chance of winning, but they're plus 600, well, I'm gonna take that risk because they're, they're only less than 1% away from having a coin toss, and the odds are way, way in favor of me winning a large amount of money if I make that bet. So you always wanna make a value bet, not just on who's going to win. All right, so that is it for Monte Carlo method number one. Hopefully I will see you all on method number two, and until then, happy wagering.